Hello, um, I'm Renske de Wit. I'm currently a PhD student at Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam and the Netherlands Cancer Institute. But today I'm going to talk to you about the work I did for my master thesis project last year, uh, which I did um, under supervision of Michael Crusoe. Let me start with giving you a brief introduction of the, the, the very broad problem. Um, I'm coming from the life sciences and in the life sciences and in other domains, we encounter a very big increase in both the size and complexity of, of data. And uh, to analyze and process all this data, we require very complex computational processes. And uh, these can uh, involve uh, both many tools um, using input data from various sources and um, to op optimize uh, and um, uh, execution. Uh, this is often done by distributed systems. And these three components make it uh, very crucial to um, preserve the provenance of the results. Uh, and basically the provenance is, uh, are all the steps that led to a particular uh, output. And this is very important if we want to reproduce the computational analysis at a later stage. And um, this is not very straightforward. Um, this is illustrated by the fact that across various scientific disciplines, the majority of published computational analyses is not reproducible. Well, part of this problem is already addressed by specifying computational processes as workflows, for example, in common workflow language. And a good and high quality workflow description uh, will already contain a lot of the provenance of the analysis. But um, what I'm going to talk about today is um, a format for the sharing of workflow executions. And um, this uh, a format should be machine accessible. Uh, it should be a data structure that is easy uh, to distribute uh, to others. And um, what also should be uh, quite straightforward is to analyze the provenance that's inside, um, uh, preferably uh, automated, and also um, re-execute the workflow as the start of a new research building on top of the analysis. Um, one example of such a machine accessible format is CWL-PROF, and this is a serialization of the research object model. And um, uh, in, in CWL-PROF, um, a research object bundle contains uh, the workflow description in CWL, input and output data for each workflow step, and also a record of the execution, and this follows the prof data model, which is a standard for the uh, representation of provenance of almost any process in uh, RDF format. There's also a tool called CWL prof pi, and this can be used to uh, re-execute uh, the entire workflow or individual steps. And it can also uh, extract certain metadata that describe the research object. And this is already uh, very nice in my opinion, but one question that was not addressed until recently is um, the question uh, whether or not the provenance that is stored in CWL Prof research objects is actually sufficient to answer relevant questions that arise when using real life workflows. And if we want to answer this question, um, we need to define a standard for provenance, and this is uh, not straightforward for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, this, this standard should both on the one hand be detailed enough to um, address highly domain specific requirements for provenance, but on the other hand, it should also be generalizable across domains. Uh, otherwise it's not a common standard. Secondly, even if we have this set of metadata defined, there also needs to be agreement about how to represent this metadata in a structured format. And this is also related to my last point, which is that uh, we should not reinvent the wheel. And ideally, it should be reusing uh, existing standards that are already widely adopted um, and specify how to best represent provenance and promote reproducibility. 
The way we addressed it in uh, this project is by examining one example workflow in detail. And, um, you, uh, but to do this, we used an approach that can in principle be applied to any workflow in any, uh, in any domain. And this approach consists of three steps. Uh, firstly, uh, I implemented uh, a workflow uh, as an example for the field of bioinformatics in CWL, and we identified the components of this analysis that were relevant uh, for reproducibility. What we did next is we used this set of metadata to analyze the current CWL prof community standards. And based on the results of this analysis, we proposed two solutions to improve on the current uh, CWL prof uh, specification. And uh, I first want to explain the example workflow that I used. So uh, this is a workflow for epitope prediction. Um, that's, and that sounds really specific, and it is. But basically, this workflow um, uh, computes both the input features and the input labels for training of a deep learning model. So even though this is a very niche um, uh, like biological problem, there will be many workflows that sort of follow a similar structure. And um, to compute these input features and labels, uh, data from several sources is used, either from databases or standalone data sets. Um, and for this workflow, we identified five use cases at different stages of the life cycle. So that, that could be very early during workflow development or very late in a stage where the trained model is made available as a web service where uh, other people can uh, uh, like generate predictions for their own data. And the research object is basically the, the standard output of that tool. Once we defined these five use cases, we uh, made a list of questions associated with each of them. So for example, uh, for the first use case, we could ask if removing a certain feature uh, had a very big influence on performance of the model. And um, what we did next is we summarized uh, this into a, a, a taxonomy of provenance, as I call it. And this consists of six uh, components. So I'm very briefly going to explain each of them. Scientific context refers to all the choices that were made during the research. So that could be the overall aim of the research, but also the reason why a particular step was included or excluded. Data and software refer to both the input and output data, as well as the, the tools that are orchestrated by the workflow. The workflow itself refers to the CWL uh, uh, description of the process. Uh, then we have computational environment, which is the, um, the system that executed the workflow. And then we have some other uh, details about uh, the execution, such as the workflow engine or the timestamps of the execution. Um, as I said before, we then uh, use this taxonomy to analyze CWL prof, and it's quite a complicated table, so I'm going to break it down in, in, in short steps. So for each uh, taxonomy component, we basically distinguish three levels of representation. So the highest level would be RDF representation in the provenance graph, because it's easily queryable. But a second level if, is, uh, is if the representation is still structured, but it's still in a CWL specific um, document, for example, the packed workflow. And the last and least favorable option would be if it is represented in a um, document that is not structured, for example, the execution log. And um, we um, also indicate for each component if it's fully represented, which is the black square, or partially represented, it's the white square. And we also indicate if the presence of a component is highly dependent on manual annotations by the workflow author, which would be um, indicated in parentheses. And this is the, the full analysis. And basically from this, we, we made three main observations. One is that the computational environment is severely under, underrepresented in the provenance. Secondly, uh, 
the RDF description of the execution is incomplete because a lot of annotations that are present in the workflow are not propagated to RDF. And uh, as a solution for this, we propose an extension to the RDF graph, but um, I'm not going to explain this in detail today, uh, but you can read it in, in my thesis if you're interested. And the third problem is that a lot of the information is very dependent on manual input by the workflow author. And uh, in, the problem is that in the current CWL standards, there are no clear guidelines for how to do this. And as a solution, we propose an annotation scheme for input data. And this is what I'm going to explain in the last part of my talk. When uh, we uh, developed this annotation scheme, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. And that's why we reused work that was previously done by, uh, by the Bioschemas Initiative. And we reused their uh, data set profiles. And basically for each uh, component in the taxonomy that related to data, we mapped it to an appropriate schema.org term. Um, but because schema.org is probably not able to express very um, domain-specific concepts, we also allow the use of other ontologies such as EDEM, to uh, give a little bit more detail about the, uh, about the content of the data. And um, I'm now going to show you three examples of how this scheme could be used in practice. So uh, the first example is a standalone data set that is stored in a fair uh, repository. So uh, the first three lines, so line two, two to four, basically indicate the CDBL specific metadata field. So we have the, the class of the input variable location and also its format. And line five to seven indicate the minimum set of information that is necessary to unambiguously identify this data set. So that would be the, the identifier of the data, the version of the data, because the identifier is not specific to the version and a very short description uh, briefly explaining the meaning and uh, yeah, context of the data. And optionally, it's possible for authors to specify other characteristics, even though in principle, this is already contained in the identifier, such as the, the name of the data or um, the, the, the publication that should be cited uh, when you reuse it. And finally, we also uh, add some domain specific annotations. So in this case, we indicate that this data set is a protein structure and that its topic is related to protein structure analysis. The second example that, that I want to show is, to, um, is a method to represent the history of input data. And when I uh, implemented my workflow, I, I tried to uh, make it as reproducible as possible. So I included the data download, but we also realized that this is not always possible in, in realistic workflows. And uh, that's why we use schema.org actions to represent a sequence of operations that ultimately produced the, the data set that was used as a workflow input. So in this case, we uh, want to convey that there was first a search in a database which produced a certain data set. Then the data set was, was filtered and the, that filtered data set was actually the one that was used uh, as an input for the workflow. And finally, um, we also realized that um, sometimes the, um, in the, the workflow authors do not want to um, annotate like individual workflow uh, inputs, but uh, rather the collection of, of inputs as a whole. And uh, we also give a way to do this. So in this case, this uh, indicates that this is a workflow execution without a certain input feature. And the, that this was done to um, test its effect on uh, the performance of the model. And this brings me to my last slide. So in conclusion, in this work, we uh, defi defined a relevant set of met uh, metadata based on one example workflow. And uh, even though it's specific for one workflow, in my opinion, it's already applicable to many other workflows. Um, but um, what also can be done is to apply the same methodology on other workflows in other disciplines. 
Um, what we did next was we analyzed zero prof using this taxonomy to see how the metadata was represented. And based on the results of the analysis, we proposed two improvements to zero prof. One is um, uh, pro like detailed guidelines for annotation of input data and also an extension to the RDF provenance graph. So um, like its provenance is, is richer than it was before. And uh, a selection uh, from the, the future work for this project, uh, apart from realizing CDO prof in, in other CDO engines, because currently it's only implemented in the reference runner, um, we um, wanted to use the provenance taxonomy to analyze other research object profiles, such as RO-CRATE. Um, what also needs to be done is to define a structured a way to represent computational environment and software. And uh, the last point I want to make is that we need to automate both the retrieval of metadata from research objects and also the collection of provenance during the execution, because this will greatly um, make the life of, um, of certain workflow authors a little bit better. So thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions.